Welcome back to Weekend Express, and uh, thank you so much for staying with us. Um, Mwishimua, th there are some pictures on screen, if you can look at them. Uh, who is that, and back then? Uh, I mean, what was going on in your mind here? This is my grandmother. Uh -huh. She helped me a lot, but she passed on. She passed on. Yeah. Well, mm. This, we were told, is President Hulu Kenyatta stylist who took you. Yeah. Uh -huh. How was this experience? <laughs> Uh, the first experience was, was, uh, was fantastic, eh? uh -huh. uh, because most of the people wanted to do something for me, uh -huh. even MC Jesse, uh -huh. MC Jesse by the way is my friend, uh -huh. even some motivation, uh, 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 some motivations in my constituency, I normally call him to come and motivate my people there, uh -huh. yeah, okay. um, <coughs> the other one there is my, my manager, uh -huh. Jolard, okay, yeah. Um, Interesting. We there got some. You know, it's still the same process. How did it feel trying trying out these new suits? Had you had, had you done had you donned in suits before? Uh, no. Nope. Uh -huh. And even uh, if I wore I wore a suit then, uh -huh. it was the local ones. Eh? It was the local ones. Yeah. So this this was quite. Uh, I think you have ever visited Maua. <laughs> yes. Uh, those are the suits we. Maua, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The choice that you may have had was quite um, lean. And of but, course, uh, this round they and elevate and move mm -hmm. to another level. Do they still fit you? This suit? Uh, now, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you then I was very small. Uh -huh, they they mm -hmm. become small. Yeah. Or have you grown big? I've grown big. <laughs> You've grown big. Yeah. Then I was very small. You were very small. In body size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that's the car. That's you, the car. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. uh, how was it driving it? Did you have a license by then when the president yeah, gifted by you? By then I had driving license. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did my driving the year 2012, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember this swearing in when yeah. you took oath? Yeah, uh -huh. mm. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I am seeing a question here yeah. from one Vivian. She asks, uh, after the president gifted you, did you buy yourself another car? Yeah. Or I are you st still using that when you were gifted by the president? I bought another car. Mm -hmm. I have... Uh, Three, I have three vehicles. Three vehicles. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Um, let's but uh, I thank His Excellency the President because yeah. he was the one who hoped this, uh, 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 that luck. That and luck. that's why mm -hmm. I and have all those I have now. And what, uh, what about the fortunes that come with being Member of Parliament, the allowances? Uh, how have you been able, if you can divulge the details of, you know, how you've been able to grow yourself even you'll get to your service as mp to the people but individually i mean the sweater you know you, you were akin to humility humble beginnings but of course you came into a position uh into a pool of perhaps what you could call wealth and you know resources how have you been able to use that to benefit yourself uh first i started by building my mom house mm -hmm. my older brother and uh, uh the second last uh, brother mm -hmm. And even my house, I did all those. Mm -hmm. Then there are those uh, uh, late uh, fortune uh, uh, pupils yeah. and students in high school and even college. Mm -hmm. I take that chance of taking them to school and paying their school fees, mm -hmm. doing their shopping. Uh, currently, I have more than that seven uh, students, mm -hmm. both in uh, high school yeah. and college whom I normally take care of because God elevated me. Mm -hmm. And if God elevated somebody, you have to give back to the community so that you can thank God through that. Mm -hmm. There are some less fortunate families which I normally take care of back in my constituency. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the activities which I normally do with the cash okay. which I get. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, because that speaks to a question just as Mufunke had asked. Um, he also asks, with your re-election, what do you see being implemented as an MP? And is there a bill you are drafting? Did you even, uh, you know, draft or uh, pass, uh, you know, draft any bill in 2017, 2022? And do you intend to draft any bills moving forward? In the year 2017, 2022, mm -hmm. I had a bill. That was a help bill. Uh, unfortunately, the House and they passed this bill, but during the asset, uh, President didn't asset to that bill. Mm -hmm. I wanted uh, 
I wanted to reduce the cost of the, the payment which normally the students do or make after, after somebody has graduated mm -hmm. because they normally, when you graduate, there is, uh, you are given a one year grace period. Then after that one year, you start paying the help. Mm. Uh, and when you fail to pay the help, there is that uh, loan which keep accruing. Mm. So that's why I wanted to change or to amend that law so that uh, it can uh, align to our daily life. Because uh, when somebody has not been employed, where this uh, student or this person will get, yeah. uh, where will he get money to remit back. So I wanted uh, this bill to, uh, to help the student who have uh, freshly graduated from uh, university mm -hmm. to secure a job first. Then after securing the job, that is the time now the, the hell uh, started demanding you the, 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 the pay bank, mm -hmm. uh, the pay bank. Yeah. So that bill uh, uh, passed in the parliament, but the section is the president failed to assent to it. Mm -hmm. But maybe this round, uh, the government which uh, we are yearning to come from tomorrow, mm -hmm. maybe we'll execute this. For the next five years, there is some amendment of law I want to make uh, in, in parliament because uh, some of the appointments which are made in, the, in those high positions, yeah. The young people are not considered. Mm -hmm. That's why you will see the executive uh, uh, appointing old men to present the youth. But if we have the law which is tying uh, the executive not to appoint uh, or to appoint at least a hand or two hand of the young people in mm -hmm. those positions, they will uh, tend to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. And there is something also I want to do because they, after the age of 65, you are supposed to be acting as an, uh, as an advisor mm. to somebody. Okay. So I want at least to utilize that angel from 65 and below mm -hmm. and 35 and below, whereby these young people can be recruited to those uh, big positions. Mm -hmm. When the aged people retire, they can take the mantle and continue that job mm -hmm. yeah so i mean the cdf is likely to escape the control of mps um and i mean with that being a matter in court how do you think or rather how do you intend to help the people of Uganda south um moving forward because cdf is one of those tools that mps are you know greatly used to develop projects here and there uh first of all i would like uh, to tell uh my people and even the people of this republic not to panic mm -hmm. and because CDF is not going anywhere. Uh, and if uh, maybe the court will uh, insist that the CDF shouldn't, uh, the CDF is illegal, mm -hmm. we will come with another way how we can get money to assist them. Mm -hmm. Secondly, for the last five years I have stayed in the parliament, I have st established a network and through those network, I will be able to work for the people of Uganda South. Mm -hmm. Uh, because currently I have many friends in uh, various countries, embassies, whereby I will be using them to empower and elevate the lives of the people mm -hmm. of Uganda South. Secondly, I have also established some relations uh, with some foreign countries mm -hmm. whereby I can get some hint for the people of Uganda South constituency. Okay. So for the next five years, mm -hmm. the people of Uganda South should expect a lot from me yeah. because i normally tell my people that uh, whenever you elect a linda yeah. you elect a linda not uh, maybe to be seen uh, to be seen in that position yeah. but to work for the people who have elevated uh, that linda to that position yeah. and i think that's why the people first of all uh, uh re-elected me yeah. and I know they have faith that I'm going to deliver to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we did see last, or this past week, uh, Meru former Meru Governor Kirito Murungi did, yeah. uh, you know, joined the UDA camp, rather the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition. Uh, what do you, what does that speak to the politics, especially of Mount Kenya East, that being primarily your region? You having worked with Governor Kirito Murungi, what are some of the or some of the things that perhaps informed him to join Kenya Kwanzaa? 
<laughs> you know uh, the former governor Kiraito mm. he is my friend and he was my friend mm -hmm. I remember back then I tried to persuade him mm -hmm. to join us in uh, Kenya Kwanza movement yeah. but uh, the former governor failed because he thought that uh, the Jubilee side would, uh, would convince the people of uh, Mount Kenya, especially Mount Kenya East, mm -hmm. because they thought this political party is uh, entitled to that region. Yeah. But what they, uh, they um, but what he never thought of is that uh, the Kenya Kwanza uh, leader and already entrenched is root in uh, in Mount Kenya East. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and uh, Governor Kiraito descending to come to the Kenya Kwanza side informs this nation that uh, the people of Mount Kenya East has already moved on. Uh, they are not the people now to be told which direction to take. They normally uh, follow the leader whom they believe that uh, this leader can deliver to them and this leader has the agenda which aligns to uh, to their needs and who can elevate them. Mm. So I think that uh, Kiraito, Kiraito and thought very well mm. to join this uh, uh, political party. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Kiraito, Kiraito Murungi is one of the leaders whom many in this country refer to be a minister of uh, politics in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, Meru has had three governors, that is your county, in the yeah. last nine years. What does that speak to, you know, the leadership of and the politics of Mount Kenya? I saw you did have a conversation, you know, or a sit down with the current governor, Kaira Mwangaza. Yeah. Um, you've also had interactions here and there with, you know, several other leaders from across the political divide. But these three governors, each serving one term, what does that speak to, or rather, sub, the, the last two serving one term each, um, what does that speak to the politics of Mount Kenya? Uh, I remember in the year 2013, 2017, yeah. the governor who was there, Governor Munya, people hand their tests in his leadership, mm -hmm. and even in Governor Kiraitu, yeah. people hand tests in his leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Meru or in uh, Mount Kenya East, the people now choose their leader of their choice according to your performance uh, because that is what the people now value. Mm. They do not value that politics of uh, ca cash spending, but they value how you perform. Remember the current governor, Governor Mwangaza, he mm. uh, was a women rep. Mm. Uh, during his time as a women rep for the last five years, he kept interacting with the normal people. Yeah. Remember, we had a very strong wave of UDA uh, in that region, but he managed to maneuver this wave. Why did he manage to maneuver this wave? It was because of the attachment with the people on the ground and his work, what he was doing as a women rep. So uh, as a leader, uh, or to my fellow leaders, uh, I would like to say that uh, people know kind of a leader mm -hmm. whom they want to choose. To and choose they will them. not choose you because of uh, the way maybe you are holding politics, the way you understand politics, but they will elect you according to your performance, the way you will perform to them. If they think that you have not uh, performed uh, to the required standard, those people will, uh, will chase you out. Mm -hmm. But if you perform well, you will, uh, you will serve uh, two terms and they will ask you even to uh, source for other positions, uh, position mm -hmm. which is uh, which is uh, which can serve them better because you remember yeah. the gubernatorial position yes. is a position which is uh, which has term limit, mm -hmm. a term limit of two terms, eh? mm -hmm. and uh, for you to serve those two terms, you must have performed for the people. So that's why uh, Meru people keep changing their leaders because of their performance. If you do not perform to the required standard set by the people they will uh, take you home. Because you've said that as you end up, you know, the, the middle people change their leaders. Do you think at some point they could change their governor to you? <laughs> uh, fortunately, maybe, because uh, 
you normally you listen to them listen to and them. maybe if they say you are the person to be mm -hmm. you can't resist you Bri follow them yeah briefly why did you move i mean in 2013 you were independent you moved 2017. To, uh, 2017 i mean you were independent uh 2022 uda was it because of the wave uh, apart from you saying that the deputy president has supported you what are some of the other factors that uh, not helped? because of the wave, eh? mm -hmm. but because of the privileges you have in the house okay. uh there are some of uh, essential the key committee, mm -hmm. departmental committee, which you are supposed to serve. Mm -hmm. And when you are serving those committee, uh, you have your voice there, maybe to change some uh, policies there. And secondly, those committees help you to perform for the people you are presenting there. Mm -hmm. And when you are an independent uh, candidate or you are independent uh, leader in parliament, you are given at least one committee. Oh. But when you are in a political party, you mm -hmm. are given two or three uh, committee uh -huh. which are key and when you are there you can exercise your legislation uh, uh, jurisdictions in those committees uh -huh. to help the people of this country and even to help the people you are uh -huh. you are presenting in those uh, constituencies okay. so that is the main thing which pushed me to join a political party because uh -huh. of those privileges uh -huh. and they are privileges uh, which are positive to the people you you present yeah um, a, you know, a few other things have changed about you did yeah. you finish your bachelor's degree yeah I finished my bachelor's degree in the year 2019 mm -hmm. and now I want also to do a master's course mm -hmm. uh, which I want to start this month then uh, maybe Kenyans also mm -hmm. should expect me in their places in their constituencies across the country mm -hmm. i remember for the last five years i had seen that uh, i would motivate uh, the kenyan young people mm -hmm. but uh, i didn't uh, do that uh, for the last five years because i knew that many will say that john paul is not experienced yeah. and john paul is not aware that uh, he will be re-elected back to parliament now i have that experience and i must uh, try to encourage uh, the young people of this country so that they can see that uh, in life everything is uh, possible mm -hmm. If God give me this leadership, I must now uh, ensure mm -hmm. that I have touched the lives of the young people in this country. Because, mm -hmm. you know, some of the people think that uh, when you are a member of parliament, maybe you become that big person who is not, uh, who is untouchable, who cannot give back or uh, impact life of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I normally view uh, my leadership in different way Brilliant. that i am supposed to be a pillar mm -hmm. of the other young people whereby they can learn uh, from me and they can elevate themselves okay mm -hmm. uh, vivian is asking again uh, back then you, you were single do you have a family are you seeing someone yeah i am seeing someone yeah. um, and soon and very soon i will uh, announce my wedding uh -huh. I remember making this decision was a tough one, <laughs> but I thank the Almighty God <laughs> because whenever you ask God to give you the right person, yeah. that is exactly what God does. Uh -huh. So now that chapter is closed. <laughs> because I can see you've just said that and someone has said they are heartbroken. So um, in 30 seconds, uh, what would be <laughs> your word to those who have come in as independents, you know, the young ones who have come yeah, in parliament, uh, members of parliament and perhaps your future. Will you, do you intend to continue serving as MP or will you, you know, have other dreams to serve maybe even as governor? I want to serve as a member of parliament of Egembe South. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to hand my fellow young people. Mm -hmm. You know, even my record has not been uh, broken by mm -hmm. anybody mm -hmm. because I was elected at the age of 23. Yeah. Even now there is nobody who has been elected in such an uh, such age mm -hmm. or even lesser. Ah, okay. I would like to, uh, to tell them that mm -hmm. uh, in the parliament you will face many challenges. Mm -hmm. Some will try to control you and to show you the direction you are supposed to follow but never follow anybody because some people will mislead you uh -huh. but if there is somebody that has genuine uh, advice mm -hmm. please follow him so that you can deliver for your people who elected you uh, 
so that maybe in the year 20, 2027, mm -hmm. the people will re-elect you. Okay. Also, I would like to congratulate my people from uh, Igembe South, mm -hmm. specifically <laughs> Kegoi and Tobocho. Uh -huh. They broke the record uh -huh. that uh, they elected the MCA of 21 years. I think he is the youngest uh, MCA. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. I would like to ask uh, them to give this young man a humble time so mm -hmm. that he can deliver to them. Mm -hmm. This young man, I remember interacting with him in my public meetings, mm. and he was telling the people he will deliver to them. Brilliant. And uh, I'm sure mm. that this young will, uh, young man, will deliver to the people. So follow yes. your dream as a leader, Kinley. Uh -huh. Perform without being swayed by those leaders who call themselves seniors, mm -hmm. and you will deliver to their people. But mm -hmm. if you follow the people who call themselves seniors, yeah. they will uh, they will end up misleading you and uh, and uh, killing your political dream. Indeed, thank you so much, Mr. John Paul Mirigi, Member of Parliament for Igembe South Constituency, for making time for us and for speaking to us here on Weekend Express. Thank you very much. Brilliant, indeed. And that's a conversation. Of course, you can uh, continue the conversation online. Thank you so much for joining us right here on Weekend Express. My name is George Maringa. I'll see you next time as always. Stay safe and be kind to one another.